press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Namaste children. In our last class, we discuss plant tissues. In this class, we will discuss animal tissues. So, you, we all know that in unicellular organisms, single cell will do all different functions. But in multicellular organisms, as the organism size increases, there is a need of different organs with a specific functions. So, in this class, Kirtana, good morning. In this class, we will discuss animal tissues. We know that atoms, from the atoms, molecules are going to be formed. From the molecules, cells are going to be formed. These cells, when cells group together to perform common function, then organs are going to be formed. Or different or <coughs> Sorry, this is tissues and this tissues forms organs, tissues forms organs, then organs form organ system and different organ system helps in the formation of organisms. So there is a need of studying about these tissues. So Naveen, Bimu, Rishi, Amsashri, good morning. So, can anyone tell how many types of animal tissues are there? So, how many types of animal tissues are there? Siri, good morning. So, by chart is considered, he coined the term tissues. By chart coined the term tissue and is considered as father of histology. So, an animal tissues. We have four types of animal tissues. One is Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and nervous tissue. So animal tissues are of four types. Epithelial tissue, connective, muscular and nervous tissue. Epithelial tissue, main function of epithelial tissue is covering and protection. So, epithelial tissue either it faces outer or inner surface of an organism. S. Kirtana good, four types of tissues. So, epithelial tissues covering, main function is covering and protection. Connective tissue, it, as the name tells, it connects different structures and organs in a body and also it helps transport substances in a body. Muscular tissue, so connective tissue connects different structures. And helps in transport of substances in a body. Then muscular tissue. Muscular tissue mainly helps in contraction and locomotion. Muscular tissue helps in contraction and locomotion. Due to the muscular contraction, that, is, uh, that results in locomotion. The nervous tissue, it 
generates and conducts nerve impulses nervous tissue generates and conducts nerve impulses that helps to bring coordination among different organs different organs in an organism for a smooth functioning so animal tissues are grouped into four types epithelial connective muscular and nervous tissue so we'll discuss in detail about this so now epithelial tissue so epithelial tissue ananya good morning epi means upon telial means growth epithelial tissue is originated from all the three germinal layers originated from all the three germinal layers that is ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm epithelial tissue originate from all the three germinal layers and in animal kingdom we discuss diploblastic and diploblastic organisms so this epithelial among the four epithelial sorry among the four animal tissues this is the one tissue which originates from all the three germinal layers so this epithelial tissue is classified into two types simple epithelial tissue and compound epithelial tissue compound or stratified epithelial tissue what's the difference between nisha good morning what's the difference between simple and compound epithelium can anyone tell the difference between simple and compound epithelium simple means single layer of cells single layer of cells lie on basement membrane compound means we see here many layers of cells one two or more layers of cells two or more layer of cells lie on basement membrane that's the main difference between simple and compound epithelium so here this is a basement membrane on this basement membrane we see the arrangement of cells when it is single layer it is simple epithelium when it is more than two then it comes under compound epithelium so difference between simple and compound epithelium so now and a simple epithelium and a simple epithelial tissue we have three types squamous epithelial cuboidal and columnar epithelium in the squamous cell epithelium cells lie on the basement membrane with the cells are polygonal in shape so like this cells are polygonal in shape in squamous cell epithelium single layer of cells lie above the basement membrane is kirtana good epithelial tissue is classified into squamous cuboidal columnar very good kirtana so 
What's the main function of squamous cell epithelium? It mainly helps in diffusion. Mainly helps in diffusion. So this type of squamous epithelial tissue we see in the lining of blood vessels and in the alveolar. That is in the alveoli. So this is the alveoli which is lined by squamous epithelium. And also blood capillaries. This blood capillaries are also lined by squamous epithelium. That's why here as it is alveoli is also lined by single layer of squamous epithelium. And even blood vessels are lined by single layer of squamous epithelium. This thin layer in this area mainly helps in. Diffusion of gases. So carbon dioxide very faster diffusion we see here. Rate of diffusion is very fast here due to this thin layer of squamous epithelium. So squamous cell epi squamous epithelial tissue have a single layer of polygonal cells lie on the basement membrane seen in the alveoli and in the blood vessels. Main function is diffusion. It helps in diffusion. Then coming to the cuboid. Cuboidal means cells are cube-like structures lie on the basement membrane. It's circular with round nucleus in the center. Cuboidal epithelium Shivakumar, four types, yes, four types of animal tissue. This cuboidal epithelium we see in the uh, lining of ducts and in the tub tubular parts of nephron. Main function of cuboidal epithelium is secretion and absorption. Secretion and absorption. Cuboidal epithelium we see in the ducts of glands and also tubular parts of nephron. Main function is secretion and absorption. Then coming to the columna, that we see a column like cells. It oval nucleus towards the basement membrane. Cells are column like lie above the basement membrane and the nucleus is towards the basement membrane. This columnar epithelium is seen in stomach and in the intestine. Main function of columnar epithelium is also secretion and absorption. And this cuboidal and columnar epithelium if they bear a A-like structure on their free surface like this, then it is called ciliated cuboidal epithelium or ciliated columnar epithelium. This ciliated epithelium we see in the bronchioles and in the fallopian tube. So, this is the uterus. Roughly, I am drawing this. Ovary produces ovum. That ovum will be released into the fallopian tube. This fallopian tube is lined by ciliated epithelium. That cilia helps to push this ovum towards the isthmus junction where the fertilization takes place. So, this cilia always moves in one direction. In fallopian tube, it helps in the movement of ovum towards the ampulla isthmus junction. And in bronchioles, it helps to remove uh, the dust particles. It removes dust particles towards the nasal cavity or over, pushes the dust particles towards the nasal cavity or oral cavity. So that is about ciliated epithelium. Abdul, good morning. Then, when the 
upper surface of columnar epithelium is modified like villi and microvilli then it is main function of that epithelium is absorption this villi and microvilli seen in the small intestine modification of columnar epithelium in the small intestine is microvilli that mainly increases surface area of absorption increases surface area that helps in maximum absorption of digested food from the small intestine that is about simple epithelial tissue some of this simple epithelium tissue modified for secretion then they are called glandular tissue they are called glandular tissue we have two types of glandular tissue unicellular and multicellular if see this is an epithelial tissue if any one cell modified for secretion then that is that type of tissue is called unicellular glandular tissue in the lining of epithelial cells if any one modified for secre if any one cell modified for secretion then it, that comes in the unicellular if many layer cells in the epithelial modified for secretion then that comes under multicellular unicellular glandular tissue we see in the alimentary canal example goblet cells that secretes mucus that mucus helps in lubrication easy passage of food from esophagus to the next regions in alimentary canal multicellular we see in salivary glands where that helps in secretion of saliva then under epithelial tissue we have one more that is compound epithelium as i told that compound means it is having two or more layer of cells lie on a basement membrane it is seen in buccal cavity and dry surface of the skin is made up of compound epithelium main function is protection against chemical and mechanical shocks then we have again compound epithelium is classified into keratinized and non keratinized it this is a basement mem membrane on that we see layer of cells two or more layer of cells if the outer layer of cell is deposited with a protein called keratin then that epithelium is called keratinized stratified epithelium if this keratin deposition is not seen then it that comes under non keratinized that is about compound epithelium keratinized is seen in sole of the foot and non keratinized is seen in the buccal cavity then in this epithelial tissue we have three junctions one is tight junction adhering junction next gap junction tight junction tight and and when two cells are closely linked so that does not allow any leakage of substances between them that type of uh, junction is called tight junction the type of junction is called tight junction adhering means here just the cells adhere to each other
in adhering junctions what happens the cells connect to each other that's all that come under adhering junctions and in gap junction we can see the cytoplasmic connections between the cells So these cytoplasmic connections helps in the movement of substances between the cells that is seen in gap junctions. Tight junctions, cells are closely packed so there is uh, leakage of substance is prevented between the cells. Adhering gen uh, junction helps to keep the cells adhered to each other. Gap junction, there is cytoplasmic connection is seen between two cells that helps in exchange of substances between the cells. That is about epithelial tissue. Next we will move in connective tissue. So can anyone can give me the examples for connective tissue? Fluid connective tissue. As I told, connective tissue connects different structures in an organism and also it helps in transport of substances in an organism. So blood is a fluid connective tissue that mainly helps in transport of substances. Connective tissue is derived from mesoderm, germinal layer that is mesoderm. Connective tissue is classified into Loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, and specialized connective tissue. Abhishek, good. Blood is a fluid connective tissue. And a loose connective tissue, we have areolar connective tissue and adipose connective tissue and a dense we have again two types dense regular and dense irregular and a srujana good morning and a specialized connective tissue we have blood bone and cartilage. So all these come under connective tissue. So areola connective tissue. Areola connective tissue is having collagen fibers. It is having fibroblast. Then collagen fiber, elastic fibers and collagen fibers. With that, it is having mast cells, macrophages. So, areola tissue having, it is made up of fibroblasts. Again, two types of fibers are they white fibers and yellow fibers, nothing but collagen fibers and elastic fibers. With that, inside that areola connective tissue, we see mast cells, macrophages. Adipose cells also. Mast cell releases histamine and serotonin. It mainly responsible for allergic reactions. Macrophages. Macro means bigger cells that engulf foreign organisms or foreign substances that enter into our body. Thereby it provides immunity. So this areola tissue acts as a support, supportive framework for epithelial tissue. Coming to adipose tissue. Adipose, it mainly stores fat. Adipose tissue, here we see the storage of fat inside cell. So this is fully fat. Thereby, it it acts as an insulator. See it beneath the skin. Adipose tissue is specialized for the storage of fats in beneath, present beneath the skin and acts as an 
insulator then dense regular regular tissue in this year in this type of tissue fibroblast and five these are fibroblast and collagen fibers arranged in a definite pattern fibroblast and fibers are arranged in a definite pattern pattern so and a regular tissue we have tendon and ligament tendon and ligament tendon connects skeletal muscles to bone whereas ligament connects bone to bone tendon and ligament come under dense regular connective tissue then in dense irregular connective tissue the fibroblast and collagen fibers are not uh, arranged in a proper manner that arranged in a uh, irregular pattern arranged in a irregular pattern that is seen in dense irregular connective tissue and a spe specialized tissue specialized tissue we have blood bone and cartilage blood is a fluid connective tissue blood is a fluid connective tissue is a fluid connective tissue having rbcs wbcs and platelets what's the function of rbc wbc and platelets rbc mainly helps in transport of respiratory gases WBC white blood corpuscles RBC is nothing but red blood corpuscles white blood corpuscles fight against diseases is main main function of WBC is to provide immunity to an organism platelets helps in clotting of blood because blood and lymph is a fluid connective tissue so RBC functions mainly helps in transport of respiratory gases amsashri blood as plasma rbc wbc and platelets good so wbc provides immunity to an organism platelets helps in clotting of blood when injury occurs then coming to the cartilage it is a pliable tissue which resists compression seen in the tip of the nose and between the vertebras of the backbone and also in embryonic stage shukumar rbc wbc platelets good then coming to the bone bone is a hard connective tissue bone is a hard connective tissue bone main function of bone is it provides framework to an organ definite frame structure it it gives definite structure to an organism and also it helps in locomotion and some bone marrow also helps in production of blood cells so bone is a hard connective tissue mainly provides definite framework or structure to an organism and also it helps in locomotion some bone marrow in an organism helps in the production of blood cells that is about connective tissue next tissue is srujana to pick up oxygen from the lungs and deliver it to the tissues elsewhere is one of the main function of rbc yes, mainly helps in transport of respiratory gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide oxygen from lungs to the cells and carbon dioxide from the cells to 
lungs. Next, muscular tissue. It is also derived from mesoderm. We have three types of muscular tissue. One is skeletal, smooth and cardiac. Skeletal muscular tissue is, it shows voluntary functions, smooth is involuntary and cardiac is also involuntary. Skeletal muscle is also called striated muscles. Why it is called striated means they are cylindrical in shape. Skeletal muscles are cylindrical in shape. Having alternate dark and light bands. Peripherally situated nucleus. See, skeletal muscles are also called striated muscles. Why they are called striated means they have alternate dark and light bands which are made up of actin and myosin. Actin and myosin are contractile proteins mainly helps in locomotion. The, as they have light and dark striations, they are called striated muscles. As these muscles are attached to the skeletal system, they are called skeletal muscles. Main function is they mainly helps in locomotion and that function is under our control. That's why these are shows voluntary functions. Shukumar, mus, uh, skeletal, smooth, cardiac, three types of muscular tissue, good. And smooth muscles. Smooth muscles are spindle shape and striations are absent. Myofibrils are arranged in a Parallel manner, centrally situated nucleus. Seen in internal organs like stomach, intestine. These smooth muscles does not have any striations. Hagagi unstriated muscles and the LTV. And the function is involuntary. The function of these muscles is not under our control. It shows involuntary function. Coming to the cardiac muscle, it shows alternate light and dark bands. Centrally situated nucleus. In skeletal muscle, we see peripherally situated nucleus. Whereas in smooth and cardiac muscle, we see centrally situated nucleus. In cardiac muscles, we see striations, alternate light and dark bands, which are made up of contractile proteins, that is actin and Myosin mainly helps in contraction of muscles and intercalated discs are seen in cardiac muscles. So, this muscle seen only in heart. Cardiac muscles seen only in heart. So, this is about muscular tissue. So, function of cardiac is involuntary. 
cardiac shows both the characteristics that are of muscles like skeletal muscle and smooth muscle like skeletal muscle it is having alternate light and dark bands like smooth muscle it is having centrally situated nucleus and involuntary in function next we'll move it nervous tissue is derived from ectoderm this nervous tissue neurons act as a structural and functional unit of nervous nervous tissue these neurons are excitable and irritable irritable cells which helps in generating and conducting nerve impulses that brings coordination among different organs to do functions with a smooth in a smooth manner nervous tissue is consist of neurons and neuroglia cells this neuroglia cells protects and supports neurons we have three types of neuroglia cells astrocytes oligodendrocytes then microglian cells so we know that neurons this is multipolar neuron different types of neurons are there unipolar bipolar and multipolar we'll discuss in detail about that in our regular classes centrally situated nucleus so these are called dendrites spancels nerve ending so dendrites carry srujana nervous tissue contain two categories of cells neurons and neuroglia good so the neurons receive the uh, nerve impulse through the dendrites and it is carried through the axon this is axon from the axon the impulse will reach nerve endings then through a junction synapses it is transferred to the next neuron so main function of neuron is to generate and conduct nerve impulse and also to bring smooth functioning of organ different organs in an organism squamous cells mainly helps in myelinogenesis coming to the neuroglia cells astrocytes provides it helps in repair of damaged nerve tissue astrocytes helps in helps to repair damaged nerve tissue oligodendrocytes helps in myelinogenesis in central nervous system squamous cell helps in the formation of myelin sheath in peripheral nervous system whereas oligodendrocytes helps in myelogenesis process in central nervous system and microglial cells they are phagocytic in nature the engulf microbes this is causing microbes thereby it provides immunity to a nervous tissue so that is about nervous tissue see so, In this chapter, we'll discuss organ and organ systems of earthworm, cockroach, and frog also, and also in detail about these four tissues in our regular classes. 
So next we'll move with slides now. We'll discuss animal tissues. See animal tissues are classified into four types. Epithelial, muscular, connective and neurons. And the epithelial, again we classified into simple and compound epithelium. And the simple epithelium we have squamous, cuboidal, columnar, ciliated, columnar epithelium and glandular epithelium. Muscular tissue again classified into three types. Unstriated, striated and cardiac. Unstriated is smooth muscle. Striated is skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle. Connective tissue is again divided into three categories. Connective tissue proper, specialized and fluid. So in the proper connective tissue we have loose and dense connective tissue. And the loose connective tissue we have areola connective tissue and adipose. And the dense connective tissue we have regular and irregular. Whereas and the specialized we have bone and cartilage and a fluid connective tissue that also come under specialized connective tissue in that we have blood and lymph and neural tissue. Types of epithelial tissue we have here uh, simple squamous epithelium, simple cuboidal, sim uh, striated squamous epithelium and transitional epithelium. Simple columnar with microvilli, pseudo stratified columnar with cells and microvilli. Pseudo stratified, pseudo means false. So, yeah, why it is pseudo stratified means the cells are arranged on basement membrane in a single layer only, but due to the different uh, position of nucleus, gives us it is having many layers. That is called pseudostratified seen in bronchioles. Transitional epithelium are subjected to change. They, will, they can increase their size and they can decrease their size. That is seen in urinary bladder. It is about epithelial tissue. Coming to the types of connective tissue. We have dense connective tissue, adipose connective tissue, which is meant to store fat, areola connective tissue, Compact bone and blood is bone is a art connective tissue having eversian canals. Blood is a fluid connective tissue. Types of muscular tissue. So the three types: cardiac, skeletal, and smooth muscle. See in the cardiac muscle, striations are present. Intercalated discs are present and function is involuntary. This type of muscle is seen in card heart itself. Allastanavi muscle na nortivi. So it is seen in heart. Skeletal muscles having striations made up of actin and myosin. Contractile proteins mainly helps in contraction and the function is voluntary. Smooth muscles here the alternate light and dark bands are absent. That's why that muscle is also called unstriated muscle or smooth muscle. Function is involuntary. Neuron is having uh, dendrites and axon. Dendrites receives nerve impulse and it, that nerve impulse will move towards cell body. From there it is passed through the axon. And from the axon terminal, again that impulse will be transferred to the neighbor neurons with a synapsis. So we see here myelin sheath, squan cell. Between the squan cell, we see nodes of ranvio. So that is this is about structure of neuron. Types of neuroglia cells. See here we see. Microglia, which is phagocytic in nature, that provides immunity to nervous system. Astrocytes having many dendrites, that's why it looks like star. These astrocytes helps in repair of damaged nerve tissue. Oligodendrocytes, oligo means less number of dendrites, 
mainly helps in myelinogenesis of central nervous system. See, there are sh shown here oligodendrocytes, helps in myelogenesis, understood? Helps in the formation of myelin sheath in central nervous system. So, this is about animal tissue. So, in, in your regular classes, we will discuss in detail about this. Thank you. Thank you, one and all.